Hey there parents, uh, we understand that as the lockdown goes on and you're starting to homeschool your kids a lot more, that it can be a bit tricky to get them involved in any sort of coding or computer science, especially if you're not so confident with it yourself. So as it goes on, we'll be producing a series of content for you to help you get up to speed on the things that you can do to support your kids while they start to do coding at home. This video is specifically about a little program online called Trinket, which is an all-in-one coding environment designed to have kids produce and save code in any browser on any kind of device. So it's really great as the next step up from scratch, which is where most young people start with their coding, clipping together colorful blocks. And this is where we move into textual coding. Even though Trinket still has some blocks that you can use as a middle step, we tend to use it more for textual coding, which is what kids tend to think of as like real coding because you're typing things in. Uh, but along with that, along with the extra power, comes a lot more frustration with typos, grammatical errors, and things like that. Trinket is a really nice little way to work on code uh, because while you're typing in, it does the updates for you alongside in the display window so you can see your work along with the results and those things update in real time. Now you can see here, I'll just change across to my screen. Uh, so this is the Trinket website and you can get to it by going to trinket.io. Uh, it's really like straightforward to get involved. The best thing you can do is sign up a new free account on Trinket before you start. It means that we are to save your code online and access it from any machine where you have a browser, as long as you can remember your password, which is yet another lesson to get involved with your kids, but that's for another time. So. We tend to use Trinket a lot at the Raspberry Pi Foundation and most of our projects on the project site that have anything to do with textual coding ask you to use Trinket as the place to do that work uh, because we found it's incredibly flexible, incredibly versatile and a very useful way to go. So just as an example, we've got our Learn to Code with Python program and there's another video coming out very shortly this week uh, from my boy Mac and he'll be explaining to you about how to get involved with Python at a basic level and how that programming language works. Now he'll go into it in a lot more detail. All you really need to know about it is it's probably the most broadly used programming language in the world. Uh, they use it for all sorts of things from web apps to running the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Uh, it's a really, really useful programming language to get involved with and the one we recommend most young people start with because it's really readable. It looks like what it says it does. Other coding languages can look like gibberish when you're trying to write them and read them and they take a much longer time to get involved, but Python is very quick and easy. And you can see here our first Python project on the project site. Straight away, you've got a trinket up here that shows you how we're running our code. Okay, so just as an example, and we'll go back to Trinket now. And you can see here that Trinket themselves had a lot of support here. So if you want to start getting working on their tutorials, you can do that. You can also use the textbooks that they have included, and you can just get started on coding straight away. It's really, really handy. And um, we use it for the AstroPi Mission Zero project, which you can see here. This is a mock-up of the flight computer uh, that we have on board the International Space Station. So you can do Mission Zero. It's not currently open, but it's a free program where your kids can get involved, write some code. It takes about 30 minutes to 60 minutes to do the project. Once they submit that code, we actually run their code in space on the International Space Station, and they'll receive a certificate saying when the ISS uh, ran their code and where it was to geostationary orbit, like where it is on the Earth, when their code ran, they get a little certificate that says all that sort of stuff, and it's really cool. It's a really nice way to get kids really excited and G'd up about doing something powerful and special with code. So it does a bunch of stuff. Um, you can see here, if I just click down, and I go to New Trinket, uh, you can see all the different programming languages that it uses. So we've got Python, like I explained. It also uses R, Blocks, which is like a middle step between Scratch and Code. And you can actually see in between using Python and things, it can convert your blocks into Python for you. So you can do the block work and then have it show you what it looks like in Python once you've done the blocks, which is a really nice middle ground for kids coming out of Scratch wanting to do something more powerful and more real world with their coding. You also see it does HTML, which again is another really great way to get kids into coding. While HTML isn't really programming, it's what we call a markup language. It's still a really great readable language that gets kids very, very quickly running and doing things powerful with their code. You can see websites, and like I say, because it has real-time feedback inside Trinket, as you're changing the code on one side, it's updating that on the other side as well. So we can open a little HTML Trinket here. You see it opens up with the left-hand side. We've got my index.html where I can write my code. And then over here, it will have a demo. So let's go to Code Club Birthday Card, which is a nice little HTML project. And you'll see here, we've got our code on the left. And on the right-hand side, we've got our card. Now, just as an example, if I change that over here, and I can say this is a demo, you'll see that it updates. And you can see here on my website, this is a demo. 
Okay, so it's updating, it's changing as I go. Click to open, I can say this is a button. And it will update my button as soon as I'm done. This is a button. Okay, so that in essence is exactly how Trinket works. When you're done, you can save your work, you can share your work online, and you can access it from any machine in the world that has an internet connection and a browser. So you can do it on your iPhone, you can do it on your tablet, you can do it on anything that will connect to the internet. It's an incredibly versatile and powerful platform to get kids coding. Now, what we can do as well is if we go back to my, yeah, where are we, Astro Pi Trinket, that's fine, I don't really want to save my work. Uh, we can see here as well that with the emulator, so the fake computer on the right, the pretend computer that looks like the one on the ISS, uh, you can see that what we'll do is we'll go sense dot typos. I'm using Australian keyboard, so that's sort of freaking it out a little bit, but that's cool. Uh, and then so I can run that code. And you see it will start to display my message on the thing across here, right? So we have a full emulator for the ISS Astro Pi machine on there, which is really fun to tinker with. Um, there's a lot of options for you in Trinket. It's completely free. It's very easy to sign on with. And they have a lot of support for you as well here in things like Hour of Python. So to get to those, you simply go to your Trinket page and you just click Learn. And it will bring you up to this Hour of Python page, which you can get started with. We've got Python with Turtles, which is where you do, I don't know if any of you remember the old logo programming language where you could make a little thing move around and leave lines behind, kind of like a digital spirograph. So Python with Turtles is a really nice one to do. And we've got some projects on the Raspberry Pi website about that and we've also got from blocks to code on the right hand side here which is that middle ground I was talking about between scratch which is block coding and textual coding in Python and then from down here we can start doing challenges turtle challenges tutorials there's loads of stuff for you to just get your kids involved with which is structured and sequential so they can just start at the beginning work their way through and start getting into more and more complicated more powerful sort of coding things once you've got them working on Trinket, they can step off and they can start moving into other IDEs or development environments, which will allow them to do even more powerful things again. If you're lucky enough to have a Raspberry Pi at home, Python is one of the best languages to get started on because in no time you can have your kids building robots, you can have them building gadgets that they can install in the house that run on the Wi-Fi. The two young guys I've got in the house here, they're seven and nine, and last week we made a remote control robot, and between us it took about 90 minutes to go from nothing to a fully working little robot that we could drive around the lounge room off my phone using an app called Blue Dot, uh, which is amazing as well. But all of that sort of stuff, again, you can find on the Raspberry Pi website. So if we go back to projects, okay, you can see here that we want to work in Python and then just all of these different things. Raspberry Pi laser tripwire is amazing fun to do, right? So if you can tell your kids that doing a bit of coding has these real world activities attached to it, sort of real power in the real world, that blows their minds, okay? So doing stuff on a screen is cool, but it's a bit mundane, they do it all the time. If you can show them how to make a real gadget out of Python, a thing that they can prop up in their bedroom, uh, next week me and the boys, they've said that they're going to make one of these laser trip wires so they can keep me and mum out of their room when they're trying to have their secret meetings. So that's a really nice hook for them to sort of get them engaged and try and make them go above and beyond their current understanding and their current level of learning to make something that they consider awesome, something that has a real world impact, something that they can see the effect of happening in their lives. So back to Trinket. Uh, and you can see here, again, all the interactive resources, Trinket for Schools. And if you're a teacher, you can claim an educator account. So if you open an educator account, you can set lessons, you can set sequential things for kids that are in your class, and all you have to do is list all of them, and they can become your students on the internet, and you can just teach them code in a distributed way. You don't have to be anywhere near them. You just set lessons, give them a ping in their email or whatever sort of the platform is that you use at your school, and they can just start working away at home, and they can submit their work to you when they're done. So that's Trinket in a nutshell, everybody. Um, if you have any questions or anything, they have full on support uh, and you can sort of, you can get in touch with us as well through the parents mailing list, the one that you're on to get hold of this video. Uh, and we're always looking for more questions, more ways to help people, more ways to get you involved and your young people involved in coding at home. Because that's our mission. We really want to put digital making into the hands of young people all over the world. And Trinket is an incredibly useful platform for doing that. If you want some more stuff, things that you can do at home with your kids, we're releasing content every week on our Digital Making at Home project. And you can get there by going to rpf.io slash home. That's it, right? It's not a big fancy URL. rpf.io slash home. And you can have all those sorts of projects, new code along videos coming out every week in beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. 
So hopefully you'll be able to go away and have a look at Trinket, get to grips with it and do something more for your kids. Uh, allow them to go, go away and start making things, tinkering with things in a really safe and secure space, a space that responds to the work they're doing at the time they're doing it. So there's no lag, there's no frustration. There's just good, clean code that gets results very fast. Thanks for watching and remember to stay home, stay safe and keep making cool stuff.